We'll now translate your room's measurements into a scaled drawing, which is the first step in creating your space plan. You can do this manually on graph paper or with the help of a digital program. I'll walk through each approach depending on your preference. Let's start with manually drawing your room on graph paper. You'll need a few tools to complete this exercise. Graph paper, we use a quarter inch and you can download a printable sheet below. A pencil and a marker. We trace over our final lines in a black marker, an architect scale or a ruler, and a straight edge. Let me first explain what I mean by a scale drawing. Obviously, your room drawn to its actual size will not fit on your sheet of paper, so we have to create a scaled model instead. This will allow us to develop an accurate layout for furniture or decorative items, as we will scale those to the same ratio. We're basically creating a mini version of the room proportional to our life size room, so we can adjust our plan before we move forward with the real thing. So how do we map that to our drawing? It's pretty simple. You'll notice that graph paper is divided into uniform squares. Oftentimes, those squares measure a quarter inch on each side, hence the name quarter inch graph paper. You can also get graph paper in other measurements like half inch, but we mostly stick to quarter inch for our drawings. If needed, like I said, you can download a PDF with that quarter inch graph paper to the right. It should print to the correct size on an eight and a half by 11 inch sheet of paper. Using quarter inch graph paper allows you to draw your room on a quarter inch scale. In the quarter inch scale, a quarter inch on your drawing is equal to one foot in the actual room, meaning each box on the paper represents one foot in your actual room. Let's look at an example. A wall that's 12 feet long in real life would be represented by three inches or 12 boxes on your graph paper. It's really just simple math. 12 times a quarter inch gives you three inches. Everything that you put into the room will also be drawn to the same scale, making your transfer of measurements pretty easy. To help us draw our room accurately, we use an architect scale and a straight edge to mark our lines. A scale looks like a 3D ruler with different scaled measurements on each side. It's designed specifically for this purpose. You just locate the scale for your drawing, in our case a quarter inch. The tick marks on this side, starting at zero and counting up by the whole number, all measure a quarter inch. Using this scale will accurately give you the ratio of a quarter inch on your graph paper, equaling one foot in your room. Be careful though because there are two scales on each edge. One starts on the left and one on the right. To use an architect scale, you'll line your zero mark on the scale to the start of a box on your graph paper, and then make a mark at the point on the scale where your measurement should end. You can use a regular ruler to make your measurements as well. You would simply count by the quarter inch tick marks. But if you are planning to hand draw multiple rooms, it might be a good idea to get an architect scale because it does make the process super easy. To begin your scale drawing on graph paper, Make sure you're using the correct measurement on your scale or ruler. For my drawing, I'm using the quarter inch scale. I'll start with the back wall with the single window. I know it's 11 feet 8 inches, so I will make a line from the zero marker to the marker that represents approximately 11 and a little more than a half foot on my quarter inch scale. I make a dot on the paper where my measurement aligns to, and then I use my straight edge to draw in the wall line. Note that I usually draw in pencil first, which allows me to erase or clean up anything while I'm working. I'll then measure for the window on the back wall, so I make small lines at 3 feet 10 inches, 4 feet to indicate the length of the window, and confirm that the rest of my line measures 3 feet 10 inches. To draw a window into your sketch, make a skinny rectangle over top of your wall's line. Next, we want to add the dimensions into our drawing. To do this, I'll first make a line mark at the start of each wall section, which divides the wall into three separate sections. I connect each vertical line with a single horizontal line across the top, and I make diagonal tick marks to note where one measurement begins and ends. Then I jot down my dimensions above the horizontal line and between the two diagonal tick marks for each section of the wall. You should also include the length of the entire wall, so I will note this with two horizontal lines above my detailed measurements from the far end of the wall to the other. I connect those vertical lines with the horizontal line, 
add in my diagonal tick marks, and note the line's length above. I'll continue this process for the other three walls, working clockwise around the room. For the next wall, there are no doors or windows, so I only need to show one dimension line for the length of the full wall. You'll notice that I'm leaving an open space for the door openings in my drawing. That's because my room does not have actual doors, there are only cut out passageways. If you are drawing a room that does have doors, you'll mark the size of the doorway as an open space, like in my drawing, but you'll also draw in a perpendicular line that equals the width of your open door on the side where it's hinged. To indicate that the door swings, draw a curved line to connect the door to the wall. It's important to include this element in your drawing because you want to avoid placing any furniture in the space plan that will interfere with the opening and closing of the door. Once you've completed each wall, make sure to add your scale directly onto the paper so it's very clear when you refer back to your measurements. I also recommend labeling your room. You can keep this drawing in pencil, or if you prefer, you can trace over your final lines and marker. Using a marker is a good idea if you plan to make copies of this drawing. It's also helpful when you're drawing out your furniture plan. We show you exactly how to do this in our room series courses, so check those out for more information.